as you can see, I am surrounded <laughs> by trees. So I am planning to put the telescope right here tonight. It has a better chance to calibrate. Let's just go ahead and connect here the telescope. Uh, I have to wait a little bit for Andromeda to pass the trees here. <laughs> Okay, let's just go ahead and start the calibration. Uh, I have some trees here, right here on the way of Andromeda. Second, third calibration. Confirm, wow. <laughs> Woo -hoo. Oh, nice. This is looking really good. Um, so I'm assuming there's Vega right there. Um, M31 and Let's just go ahead and go that way. Hopefully it's out of the way. The tree. Oh, oh my God. Right there, right on. Wow. Wow, that looks really good. I mean, oh, it looks really nice. Uh, I'm going to leave the game at 80 almost default settings. I prefer to have things a little bit under than over exposed or over everything. 13 seconds. I'm going to leave the sharpness at 29. I need to go here on more. So I am going to change here 799 images. How about that? But I think this is going to be good. Um, let's just go ahead and start. Very good, and now it's the big moment that probably most of you have been waiting, and it's how can I win this uh, dwarf telescope with the uh, AstroNerd? Well, it's very simple. We need to get 3,000 views on this video in 100 likes. Okay, that's it. So all you need to do is, let's see, did you just watch the video? Be sure to click like, and also be sure to write a comment, whatever you want to say on the comments. It doesn't matter. I want to meet all of you. But all of those that uh, wrote comments, I am going to be writing your name, your name, the name that you have on YouTube, of course. And then as soon as we hit those numbers, I will announce the day of the draw that it's going to be the big giveaway, which is a dwarf telescope. And for the winner, I will get in contact with you. I have a magic formula to do this, okay? So let's just go ahead, watch the video, click like, it's very important, and write a comment, and you're in. Very good, so after all the settings and calibration that took maybe two to five minutes now it's time to see my first images of the andromeda galaxy <laughs> whoa yeah <laughs> it's a much better night tonight than the night that i tested it that the scene conditions were not the best tonight we have a much better night I'm starting to see here some clipping right there on the uh, top of the screen, but that should be no problem because this is uh, kind of like a live stacking that we have. So I am going to have the raw images, so that should be no problem. I should be able to get rid of all of that. Um, so this first time I see this, because I haven't done a, a long session like what I'm doing right now. Okay, uh, so for those of you that are not going to do uh, more advanced editing techniques, this is uh, what you're going to get. You will get a JPEG photo, which is called Stack. Maybe you are wondering what are all those black lines and why does that happen? So now let's see if we can visualize a little bit that field of rotation that happened on the Andromeda images once all of the uh, photos had been stacked together, one on top of the other one, 
and it looks like it's they're doing something like this right which is what we're seeing in the corners and that is because one photo has to align uh, the stars have to align with each other and as you take one photo here the other one it's moving 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 because of the earth is rotating so the basic function on the dwarf telescope is a telescope that works as an out azimuth, which means that the uh, two axes, which is this one right here, is going to move in an horizontal way like this. And where the lenses are, it's going to move up and down. So we have one of the axes, it's going to move in an horizontal way to track the stars and the other one it's going to be moving up or down if you want to avoid that field of rotation in your images and you're going to do long photographing sessions which long photographing sessions is going to be probably anything over 15 or 20 minutes that's enough time to, for you to start seeing the field of rotation, okay? The uh, dwarf telescope can also be polar aligned. And to be polar aligned, then the whole thing is going to change and then it's going to work as a, an equatorial mount, which means that it's going to be in a 45 degrees angle all of the marks need to be perfectly aligned and I'm going to do a uh, future video on this subject. And in this case, which is probably the mistake that I made as I thought, I had it uh, aligned as an equatorial mount, but I did not. Uh, I think the mistake I made is that I did not know that the uh, lens the lenses have to be aligned with the little marks that are here. This way, once it's uh, polar aligned with Polaris, without moving anything, then the telescope, it's going to do this movement to track the stars. And then it's going to be parallel with the Earth uh, rotation axis. So that's how you fix those black artifacts that happen when the images have been stacked in a long astrophotography session. And now I want to show you with our own image, my own image from the uh, dwarf uh, telescope of the Andromeda galaxy. This is an animation uh, that I prepare in PixInsight, which is the uh, editing software for astrophotography. And this way you can see how everything is moving. It's like a, uh, an optical illusion or delusion. <laughs> As you can see, Dwarf Lab makes things very easy. And another easy part of it, another process that it's relatively easy, if you want to make it easy, it's the photo, the final image. Okay, so for those of you that just start in an astrophotography and you don't know how to uh, edit with advanced techniques and use the astrophotography, editing software not a problem because you are going to have already a stacked image that you just you can edit it you can do some simple editing you can show it the way it is it's going to be fabulous okay so here we are in photoshop because it's the, the uh, uh, program that i normally use for editing in the computer but you can use any software that you want to use or any app on your phone so um, let me just go ahead here and here's the first uh, process just a, a simple uh, cropping the image uh, I would like to preserve this uh, beautiful <laughs> galaxy you can go little by little and said that way you start uh, getting rid of the uh, black lines and we are right there on the edge of the galaxy and we can just probably leave that corner right there. That it's pretty much about it. Um, we can put some 
something some graphics or something there okay so now we have the first part which is crop the image we can do any adjustment let's just play a little bit with the uh, curves and see what happens we can just kind of like go right there play a little bit with the uh, actually that looks pretty good <laughs> there you go we can uh, use all kind of techniques we can sharpen the photo a little bit we can add colors but there you go i mean that is ready to go photo to show the world very good so now it's time to do a little bit of magic on pix inside and pix inside is one of the uh uh editing softwares for astrophotography and it's the one that I use. Okay, yeah, looking much better. <laughs> Now I want to uh, stretch this image and see what we get. Okay, so may, let's just go ahead and start real quick with some basic editing. Uh, I am going to do the uh, dynamic background extraction what happens Ooh. <laughs> blur exterminator uh, and let me just go ahead and just use default settings Ooh. Ooh. how about that okay well <laughs> It's starting to look even better. Mm. Remove a little bit of that green SCNR, which is one of the my favorite processes. And there you go. And, and now I am going to do the noise exterminator now because there is a lot of noise on the uh, image. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> I think uh, once again the demonstration speaks for itself the Im imaging session was amazing I have no problems no worries no stress and I was able to photograph the Andromeda galaxy for three hours I was able to see all the other functions of the uh, dwarf telescope and also work a little bit and find solutions for that field rotation on that final stack image. So I think um, it was a very good experience on my first full session photograph in a galaxy. And don't forget to like the video and write me a comment so you can enter this giveaway celebrating the holidays with a dwarf lab right here on your favorite astro nerd channel i will see you next time with another video of i don't know what the next video is going to be but uh, it's probably the aliens